so when we are talking about the so so the orifice meter construction is having a constant area constant area and and where we have a where we have a orifice plate or the circular disc plate with a with a area with an area drilled on that one so that there is an opening on this one so this opening area this opening area we can notice here in this one so this is what the opening area we have so in this construction we have only constant pipe and a circular disc like plate inserted in, in, into the pipe so that plate we will call it as that plate we will call it as a orifice plate so that plate will be calling it as an orifice plate we have it here in this one so this orifice plate this orifice plate when you are talking about this orifice plate so the orifice plate internal diameter so even we are interested about what is the internal diameter available inside this orifice plate so as far as the total diameter is concerned if the total diameter is d if the total diameter is d if you are talking about the total diameter as d so that means the inside diameter so that is the opening inside the circular disc maybe maybe it will be ranging it will be ranging in between so that means inside diameter so that is d1 will be ranging in the range of 0.42 to 0.4 0.6 times so that means the diameter inside this particular that is a drilled hole inside the disc this diameter can be in the range of 0.4 to the 0.6 times of the 0.6 times reduction in the particular to the original diameter d original diameter d so then the lesser than this one so that is around 40% or 60% of the diameter it will be opening in this one so that plate we will be calling it as an orifice plate so as far as orifice plate construction is considered so orifice plate is a circular disc which is having an opening in that one which is having a reduction in the area which is having a reduction in the area which ranges in between 0.4 to 0.6 times of the diameter 0.6 times of the diameter d reduction in that one so that will be placed inside the orifice meter construction and and next point when we are talking about this one so now we have talked about this constant area pipe and we are talking about the orifice plate internally how it is a sectional view how it is looks exactly so when you are seeing it in the other view now we have connected even with we have connected with a we have connected with a differential manometer we have connected with a differential manometer and the location of this differential manometer location of this differential manometer should be so that means where we are measuring the pressure where we are measuring should be at the location of at the location of it should be it should be at 1.5 times of the d 1.5 times of the d ahead of the ahead of the orifice plate ahead of the orifice plate and and the manometer connection which is given on this one so that is the other end of the manometer should be connected at a distance of at a distance of 0.5 so that it is not greater than the 0.5 diameter time 0.5 times of the d so at in between these two so now the question comes sir why you have why you have made a distance of 1.5 diameters of the original d on this one and and why it has been immediately behind your measuring only at the 0.5 d so where where at the section one where at the section one it is like it is acting like an inlet of the fluid flow or the inflow without any influence of this particular orifice plate without any influence of this particular orifice plate on the fluid flow so there we have kept it at around 1.5 times of the diameter so that means it will be purely the free stream flow the direction of the flow flow will be actual velocity will be available here in this one now now what is the point of keeping that manometer difference immediately after the 0.5d is here here actually the virtually the throat section has been formed because of the fluid flow there is a virtually there is a virtually throat has been formed because of the fluid flow so that we will be calling it as this particular virtual throat we will be calling it as vena contracta so this will be calling it as a contraction section this will be calling it as a contraction section that is a that it is known as a vena contracta so where where the contraction where the contraction is happened actually actually there is no there is no section available here in this one in order to guide that particular fluid flow in this way only but but it has made it has made from the flow physics that it has made from the flow physics that so this in this zone in this zone so there is no noticeable there is no noticeable fluid flow occurring in this zone so that means it has acted like a it has acted like a artificial throat without constructing without constructing any without constructing any section 
the fluid is the fluid is behaving like as it is having a converging and the diverging portion now what exactly is happening at this plate so here at this plate so the fluid is getting circulated the fluid is getting circulated and and there the circulation of the fluid flow results in the losses here because of the circulation the fluid flow will get losses in this one so that is here the fluid flow will get circulation in this zone so that effectively where it is available so there we have capturing that section two. there we have kept at the section two that is in between the section one and two when you are constructing the orifice meter and the orifice plate should be like this and we have to connect it with a distance of 1.5 d times where the initial manometer one end should be available and the other leg of the manometer should be behind the plate at 0.5 times of the diameter d why because the effective capture of the fluid flow variation or the throat if you are talking about this throat which is formed by the with respect to the fluid flow or because of the orifice plate obstruction or because of the orifice plate obstruction this throat will be formed and that throat location we would are interested to measure what is the difference of the pressure raised in that one so at that locations we have connected with a manometer at a 0.5 diameters of the d and in front it is 1.5 diameters of the d and how much the variation of the internal diameter of this particular that is opening of the orifice plate can be in the range of 0.4 to 0.6 times that range we can keep it in order to effectively capture in order to effectively capture that how the fluid flow is how the fluid flow is accelerating by using the by using the orifice meter by using the orifice meter so now before moving to the next one we should know what are the diameters available in this one so that here at this section when you are measuring so this diameter we will be calling it as the orifice diameter so that is diameter at the orifice diameter at the orifice and here what we are measuring so that it is a diameter at the diameter at the section 2 diameter at the section 2 and when you are talking about at this section that it is a diameter d1 d1 now so as far as in this section it is being considered artificially artificially it is behaving like a throat where actually where actually we did not keep any geometrical variation in order to measure the flow but because of that flow difference this is accelerating on that by using the orifice plate orifice plate now now let us apply let us apply the bernoulli's equation let us apply the bernoulli's equation at point 1 and 2 let us apply the bernoulli's equation at point and 1 and 2 then let us find out the resultant discharge we are interested in that one so that is q is equal to we are interested to find out the discharge at a point two so that q is equal to a2 into v2 in order to find out this discharge so effectively i'm not sure what exactly the variation or the velocity rise at the point two in order to measure that i'm applying the bernoulli's equation applying applying bernoulli's equation at one and at point two, applying the Bernoulli's equation at point one and point two, we get it as p one by rho g plus v one square by two g plus z one is equal to p two by rho g plus v two square by two g plus j to 2 but if you see if you see along the center line when you are measuring the fluid flow so that means when you are measuring along the center line of the fluid flow along this particular points so there is no datum change noticed on this one so then we can say that z1 is equal to j to 2 then we can say that it is z1 is equal to j to 2 so then our resultant equation we can write it as p1 by rho g plus v1 square by 2g is equal to p2 by rho g plus p2 square by 2g as there is no datum change happening in this particular fluid flow or we are measuring along the axis of it so we can say that z1 is equal to z2 our interest is to find out what is our actual v2 is actual v2 is so in order 2g my interest is to know what exactly the v2 is so let me write v2 square is equal to so let me write this p1 by p2 so let me assume that h is equal to p1 by p2 p1 minus p2 by rho g so then i can write it as p2 square is equal to h plus so that means here v2 square by 2g so that it is h plus v1 square by 2g so when i'm sending that 2g also even on to the other side then my equation of v2 will become 2g h under root plus under root of 
so that uh, yeah have multiplied with the 2g on the other side so when i multiply with the 2g on this one here when i multiply with the 2g on this one so i have only v2 is equal to under root of 2g h plus under root of v1 square because the 2g are sent on to the other side that will become 2g h plus v1 square by 2g into a denominator and the numerator get cancelled so my v2 is equal to under root of 2g h plus v1 square i got the equation as right so writing that equation writing that equation i get it as right so v1 v2 is equal to v2 is equal to under root of 2g h plus under root of v1 square but actually if you see at this particular point of the at this particular second section at the second section it is it is the artificially which has formed because of the coefficient of contraction because of the coefficient of the contraction so that resultant fluid flow is acted like a acted like a throat here in this one the resultant fluid flow so the, that that has got a it has got this particular one so that it is become so that it has become so that it is that it has become so that it is the artificial throat has been formed because of the coefficient of the contraction so or we can write that v2 is equal to under root of 2g h plus v1 square okay right now now coefficient of contraction is given as cc so that is coefficient of contraction is equal to a not by a not by so the coefficient of contraction that is a2 by a not so where where the coefficient of contraction at the section 2 coefficient of contraction at the section 2 now exactly come what exactly this coefficient of contraction is what exactly this coefficient of contraction is so the coefficient of contraction is stating that coefficient of contraction is stating that whatever the orifice we have at the area at the orifice is a not represented and a2 is the area at the section 2 where the coefficient of contraction resulted from the fluid flow if the coefficient of contraction that has resulted so that means here the fluid has completely got contracted and it got expanded and remain constant at that particular region so that we are trying to relate with the coefficient of contraction that we are trying to relate with this particular formula name coefficient of contraction so that it is given by cc coefficient of contraction is equal to a2 by a0 a2 by a0 now now but actual equation we have we have for this one so that it is so now if you are writing that a2 a2 is equal to a0 into cc a0 into cc from this one when you are writing that so that why we have introduced the coefficient of contraction because actual fluid flow doesn't have the geometry on that one but here the throat has formed here the throat has been formed because of that because of the fluid flow resulting from this particular one has acted like a contraction so in order to account that contraction ratio so that the ratio in between the second section and at the orifice have related with a cc that is this coefficient of contraction that it is coefficient of contraction where a2 is equal to a0 into cc where a2 is equal to a0 into cc now now but but by applying by applying my continuity equation applying the continuity equation because i just want to replace this v1 on to the other side in order to replace that one so i am using the continuity equation here in this one so i am using the continuity equation here in this one so my continuity equation will be giving it as a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 continuity equation is given as a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 but actually here our a2 has been changed into a0 into cc because actual the actually i don't have any geometry at this particular location too for that reason only we are writing it as a0 into cc so that means my a2 will become a0 into cc that is a0 into the area at the orifice into the coefficient of contraction into the v2 divided by a1 divided by a1 is equal to p1 divided by a1 is equal to p1 now after substituting this in that above equation after substituting this in the above equation we get it as we get so that is our our equation of v2 our equation of v2 after substituting that after substituting this term into it after substituting this v1 here in this one we get our v2 as we get our v2 as so that is v2 is equal to under root of 2g h under root of 2g h plus a not cc v2 by a1 whole square by a1 whole square now now here we have here we have v2 on both the sides 
here we have v2 on both the sides but in order to find out my theory in order to find out the discharge i need that v2 to be substituted find out what is v2 is equal to find out what is v2 is equal to finding out that what is v2 equal to we'll get the we'll get the v2 and then we can substitute in that equation so solving it for v2 solving that above equation or getting that common of v2 we will get the expression for the v2 so on solving this for v2 on solving this for v2 we get under root of 2g h by under root of 2g h by 1 minus a naught square c c square by a1 square so that it is we got it for a v2 we got it for a v2 now right so we got it for a v2 now so here on solving it for a v2 we get it under root of 2g h by 1 minus a naught square into c c square by a1 square under root that it is 1 by 2 so now we got now we got our v2 now we got our v2 so let us substitute this in our actual equation required let us substitute this our in our actual requirement so that we need to find out the discharge of this one so v2 is equal to under root of 2g h divided by 1 minus a naught square so let me substitute that into the discharge formula that it is q is equal to q is equal to a2 into v2 so when i am writing it is a2 and i am writing it as a2 but actually we have mentioned that a2 is equal to cc into a naught into the v2 is actually under root of 2g h divided by divided by under root of divided by under root of 1 minus a naught square cc square divided by divided by so that we have here a1 square a1. so we get it as so that is 1 minus a naught square by a1 square into cc square done cd is equal to cc into so let us utilize this expression in order to find out let us use this expression cd is equal to that is coefficient of discharge is equal to cc into 1 minus a naught square by a1 square a naught square by a1 square divided by 1 minus a naught square by a1 square into cc square and how did we obtain this equation is if you are using your expression if you are using your expression like q is equal to a2 v2 and if you are using q is equal to a naught into cc into a v2 so when you are using these two expressions we can find out we can find out what is the actual discharge to the theoretical discharge actual discharge to the theoretical discharge relation we can find out so in order to find that one so i am utilizing this coefficient of discharge is equal to coefficient of discharge is equal to coefficient of contraction into 1 minus a naught square by a1 square divided by 1 minus a naught square by a1 square into cc just i just i have used these two forms of the equation and i have related between the coefficient of discharge into the coefficient of discharge in order to get my expression of q theoretical to the q actual in order to relate it to the q theoretical to the q actual so in order to relate that equation so i am supposed to write where cd is equal to where cd is equal to cc into under root of 1 minus a naught square by a1 square so that it is let me write it overall square here in this one divided by the denominator so that it is 1 minus a naught by a1 square into cc square that is that is where we just have substituted this cd here in this one but cd into cd into the actual actual one so that we got it as a naught into a naught into a1 into under root of 2gh into under root of 2gh divided by divided by a1 square minus a2 square sorry a naught a sorry this is just a moment so this is this is a1 square minus a1 square minus a naught square into cc a naught square into cc then on simplifying this equation on simplifying this equation we will get the actual discharge we will get the actual discharge so previously what we have found this one so that it is a theoretical discharge now we are getting the actual discharge expression just simplifying this equation we will get the actual discharge. so on solving the on solving the above equation for the actual discharge on solving the above equation for the actual discharge, we will get it as so actual discharge if we are writing in terms of the CD. And when you are writing in terms of the CD, we can write it as CD into A0 A1 under root of 2GH by A1 square minus A0 square. Or when you want to write it in terms of the CC, we can simplify the above expression. So we want the actual discharge, we will get it as CD into A0 A1 under root of 2GH divided by A1 square minus A0 square when you are using a orifice meter. When you are using a orifice meter.
this is the actual discharge expression.